So a new generation of Pokemon has been with us for a few weeks now, and with it of course came a brand new trio of starter Pokemon. As usual, starter Pokemon are some of the most intriguing in any given region, simply due to how much attention their concepts get. They are often some of the most interesting Pokemon in the region from a lore and a design standpoint. We've gotten well enough time to sit with Sprigatito, Fuecoco, and Quaxley, but now that most of us have likely met their final stages, what can we glean from them in terms of a unifying theme for the trio? Let's talk about it. It's no secret that each starter trio, dating back to probably Generation 4, tends to share a theme between the final stages, whether explicitly confirmed or simply speculated by fans based off of obvious similarities. I won't run through each one too in depth, but what's important to note is that each of these trios has a theme that mirrors something about the regions or the games that they originated in. The Generation 4 trio may represent mythology, with Torterra being the world turtle, Empoleon being the god of the sea Poseidon, and Infernape being Sun Wukong from Journey to the West. This mix of various world cultures and their myths is fitting for Sinnoh. Then in Generation 5 we've got Superior, French aristocracy, Samurat, a Japanese samurai, and Embor, a Chinese warrior. The variation in inspiration for this trio reflects Unova's parallels to New York City which is commonly known as a melting pot of cultures, thus a melting pot of a starting trio. In Generation 6, we've got Chestnut the Warrior, Greninja the Rogue, and Delphox the Mage, a group of RPG classes fitting for a region based on France, and with so many references to a fantastical medieval past in Kalos. Generation 7 seems to be the one aberration from this recent trend, offering a cohesive trio for sure, all based off of performers in some way, but to me at least, it doesn't seem to have all too much to do with Alola's tropical Hawaiian atmosphere, unless you count performance as leisure or entertainment, which can be argued as a cultural cornerstone of Alola. Finally, Generation 8 is some of the most overt, because it not only ties into the themes of Galar, the fictional region, but expressly references the real-life location that inspires the region. We get a trio of Rillaboom, the rock band drummer to reference the British invasion in music, Inteleon as the spy to reference James Bond, and Cinderace, of course referencing soccer. Sorry, football. The most popular sport in England. Now let's head over to Paldea. What theme do these starters share? And how does it reference Paldea's cultures or themes? Maybe even Spain's? Well, let's dive into each final stage individually before the theme becomes apparent, and I explain why I find it so interesting. We'll start with Skeledurge, the final form of Fuecoco. This is perhaps the easiest to pinpoint the origins of. Heck, we speculated way back when Fuecoco first sported those skull-like markings on the face, and even showcased some pepper influences. Indeed, Skeledurge capitalizes on a full Mexican theme, honoring the Dia de los Muertos holiday with skull motifs to represent a cavalera, and a ghost typing that further showcases a connection to this holiday, the Day of the Dead. Furthermore, its pre-evolution Crocolore is donning a sombrero to further drive home this origin, and its singing secondary motif makes a clear reference to mariachi singers. So why is this heavy Mexico influence so significant? Well, it almost goes without saying that a huge part of Mexico's history is rooted in interactions with Spain. Because Spain colonized the entire region, beginning with the Aztec Empire in the 16th century. So keep that idea in mind as we continue on to the other starters here. Cuacuevo's influences are also quite obvious, as this limber bird seems to be very rooted in some kind of festivity, most likely the Rio Carnival in Brazil made obvious by its dance patterns and feather adornments all across the body. This Brazilian theme is made even more obvious when you consider that its fighting type and emphasis on dance may also reference a very specific kind of martial art, also known as capoeira, a fighting style that combines dance, combat, and acrobatics. It's a tradition that combines the customs of indigenous, Portuguese, and enslaved Africans in, you guessed it, Brazil during the period when Brazil was colonized by Portugal, another country that shares the Iberian Peninsula with Spain. And it seems like Paldea is meant to be representative of the whole Iberian Peninsula. So that's now two out of three starters that seem to be based on traditions from real world places in the Americas that were once colonized by Iberian kingdoms. Does this follow suit with our third starter? 
the grass type Meowscarada? Perhaps. This one is a little more up for debate, I think. It's more than possible that the Sprigatito line is simply based off of folk tales and actual animals endemic to Iberia, meaning the legend of Puss in Boots and the Iberian Lynx, a wild cat species. However, the fact that Meowscarada's name and design so heavily makes note of the mask, the masquerade, well, I really think that this is a deliberate reference to Mardi Gras, another Christian carnival like Rio's Festival that is most associated with New Orleans, Louisiana. This holiday in popular culture invokes images of elaborate masks, and in some cases, associations with spirituality, born from the melting pot of European Christian influences and West African or Haitian religions. Most famously in that department, New Orleans is most known for its association with Louisiana voodoo. Meowscarada seems like the perfect representation of all the cultures that influenced Louisiana. Many associate this place rightfully with colonization from the French. But Spain also played a role there, with France being defeated in the Seven Years' War, transferring control of the territory to Spain in the mid-18th century, who notably had other influences as well in the American South, being the first white settlers of Florida and exerting their influence on the indigenous peoples here as they did further south just two centuries prior in Mexico, while at the same time Portugal controlled Brazil. You see it now? It's not like this is some huge revelation, and I'm certainly not the first person to figure this out. However, I do find it so interesting that this is the perhaps most regionalized and layered theme we've ever gotten for a starter trio, because you can define it on so many levels. I would start with the term colonization. All of these Pokemon are inspired by animals that inhabit lands colonized by Iberian empires or are from those empires themselves, being the Iberian lynx, the South American crested duck, and the Caribbean American crocodile. All of these Pokemon are further inspired by traditions, festivals, or holidays from these areas, being Mardi Gras, Dia de los Muertos, and Carnival. Most importantly, before we wrap this up, I think it's most important to acknowledge the dark truth behind all of this, as cool as these themes are. Because in all these regions, this wasn't a simple cultural exchange where Spanish or Portuguese people got to bring back cool little festivals, animals, or materials to their kingdoms. In all these cases, it resulted in significant loss of life, enslavement, disease, displacement, and so much more for the indigenous peoples that lived here. I am not the authority on all this, and I don't want to make it seem like I am. So I've attached further reading in the description that's worth a very careful read if you're interested in learning more. It was a really helpful basis when researching this video. I simply find it interesting that in some sense, Pokemon is acknowledging this theme of colonization. We got a taste of this with the Indian elephant Kaparaja in Galar, who is said to be from a distant land, referencing the British rule of India. But now, the three most important and popular Pokemon of Paldea, in essence, are front and center, displaying an undeniably significant, yet dark part of Iberian history. For all these reasons that I've discussed today, I think this sets a new precedent for Pokemon starter trio themes. And when looked into it, can not only be pretty entertaining, but more so educational. So what do you think of this analysis? Which starter is your favorite and why? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time for more content.